but perfect. Right, that's your signal that you're ready. Yes. Tell me when you're ready, Lori. You may begin when you're ready, James. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone. Episode 5 of The Closeout for 2020. James Lissman, Community Basketball Manager. Uh, Laurie McDaniel, Community Development Manager. <laughs> Marty Davidson, <laughs> Referee Manager. I know my job. Well yes, done. no, well done. And this past week was the official opening week at the Miles Toyota Women's Premier Competition. So Laurie McDaniel will take us through those games first. Thank you, James Lissman. <laughs> um, the first game that we're going to chat about is Lincoln University uh, versus University of Canterbury, so clash of the clash of the unis there. Um, UC are up 16-14 to end the first half, and Tessa Morrison came away with uh, 28 points yes. out of that game. Nice. Um, Lincoln turned the 26-17 lead um, early in the second quarter and then just kind of kept it from there. So Subasa Nisbet for... Um, Lincoln. Lincoln with 19 and Lauren Hippolyte with 17 held on to, to lead 65-55 there, um, which good close game, which is great. Um, the second game, uh, women's prem game of the day, not quite as close of a match there, North Canterbury versus Horswell. North Canterbury uh, came away with a pretty large victory there um, with Horswell just struggling to put the ball in the hoop there offensively. Um, Saf Wido coming away with... 10 points, the only double digit scorer for Halls will be there. But for North Canterbury, um, professional player and tall fern Mary Golding came away with a, a big 30, 30 points yeah, there. Nice. And uh, Masumi Yamada next up on scoring with 14. And basically, North Canterbury just slowly progressed the whole game to come away with an 85 to 35 victory. Yeah, and Clive Beaumont, our GM, was down there and said the, the final scoreline didn't reflect how close the game actually was and competitive it was. So. Um, Halls will definitely want to try and get on the, the winning column this week. On to the men's premier competition and um, we'll say an exciting close game, Marty. Yeah, yeah. well, I'd say it was a terrible game, but at least it was close, I guess. Yes. So, yeah. so I, I was doing stats for this one. It was a back and forth game between Jeez. Pioneer um, and Checkers. A lot of rebound opportunities for both teams, we'll say, and turnover opportunities. Yes. Um, Sam Riley, 17 points and 11 rebounds, a double-double. But it was Pioneer who were up 10 points in the second quarter. Checkers, though, came all the way back. Carlos had a few big threes to take the lead halfway through the fourth. And Adam Morgan had 13 points. But it was Adam Morgan. You see Nicky would had a three here to um, cut the lead to one when they were down four with only, I think it was six seconds remaining when that happened. Adam Morgan, an ill-advised pass that got turned over. And then Ollie Davies, after the inbound play for Pioneer, got fouled by Adam Morgan. So... Um, not a great finish to the game for him. No time on the clock, and at the time he went to line shooting free throws with no time left. 14 of 27 the team was from the free throw line at that stage, so odds were we were heading to overtime, but he did hit both of these for Pioneer to sneak away with a 60 to 59 win. Uh, MVP of the game was Nick Irwood, um, the big three, and then um, yeah, he had, I think it was 11 rebounds. I think I said that, possibly not. But um, the big three was a major one that he had in the game there. How was your shooting percentage, Marty? Yeah, well, uh, hopefully it doesn't come on the screen there. We'll right. there. <laughs> it may have been better than average for the team. Well, maybe. Like... It could have been in the other way. I think we were four of 37 from three. Yes. Oh, yeah, nice. Good volume, though. Yeah. Good, good, good just going volume. Yeah. Wow, yeah. You know, you're lucky that it was three of 36 until yeah, we had three. Yeah, exactly. So. exactly. Uh, my game to cover this week is Lincoln Uni uh, versus Atami. So for Lincoln, Ben Hall uh, continues to steal a play, 32 points. Um, yeah, big, big, big scoring output for him. Yep. Josiah Williams had 22, and this kept Lincoln in the game. Uh, they stayed around about 10 points, but Atami was sort of in control of this game, uh, mostly for, for the most part. Atami extended the lead to 22 in the third quarter uh, before Lincoln came mm -hmm. back and got it back to eight points. Kurt Finneon had 21, so he's considered, he's um, been playing really well consistently each week, so good play from there, Kurt. And Joel Jeffrey in the middle, 21 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 of them were offensive. So, How many were his own? Yeah, that's a good question. Would it be funny to look not at that, that many. Like not, he, no, I, yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of Joel, so yes. I'm just, yeah. yeah. No, they pretty much ran the ball screen, yeah. forced Bears no. to commit, and then Joel yeah. just walked to the room and catch I think a he, missed shot. I think he, he, right. looking at the stats, I think he did that in like 19 minutes as well. Like, yeah. That's a lot of rebounds and a lot of points, and that's Small amount of time, so good on him. Yeah, game MVP for him when you, yep. when you do that well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, again, Joel Jeffrey MVP um, and a good one for Atami. I think a 3 and 0 now. Yes, so, they are. Yeah, yep, so, that's right. So, yeah. And the last yeah. men's premier, to Miles Toyota men's premier game, is also the Glory League game of the week. Uh, UC versus Gators here. UC looked like it was no contest. They built up a 20 point lead 
Nate Campbell, 16 points and eight rebounds, who's back playing his, his first game for UC, his normal club. And also, shout out to Ben Van Norden. He messaged me to say this might be his final men's oh, yeah. <laughs> club game for quite a while as he's moving away to Wellington. And this is quite possibly the greatest rebound I've seen in local club competition. Reminded me a bit of Dennis Rodman saving it between his legs here um, to the big fish, who, you know, is quite a fast pass and he did well to catch it as well. Anyway, Gators came all the way back with a dominant third quarter. Zach Cannon, the youngster, with 27 points. And Amosa Vaitawa and I with 22 points. Surprise, zero steals for him because he normally, you can count on him to have a couple of them as well, but doing it from the, the um, offensive end this time. With less than a minute, Gators was up five. This was cut to one with five and a half seconds remaining after a couple of free throws and a fish layer. Nate Campbell and Josh Chin, you can see here, knocked the ball out of bounds off of Zach Lobin's foot when all they had to do was sort of catch it and expect to be fouled. And you can see how disappointed Zach is just with the way that the play happened. Ball gets advanced, UC um, gets the inbound to Josh Peedham, he drives, and despite missing the shot, does create enough space under the hoop for Brent Fisher to come in, clean up one of his eight rebounds, scores his 14th point of the game to sneak away with a one-point win here. Do you think over... Pete was happy? Uh, well, yeah, the, the dancing on court, I think, I would say yes, he is extremely happy with the way they snuck out of there with a win, because, I mean, down five with a minute to go, you, you're pretty much like, we need a miracle to win here. And, that's exactly what happened. Oh, game MVP, Nate Campbell. I forgot to text on him. Uh, very good. Uh, Marty's Minute this week. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, start of the dribble travels. So a lot of the referees, I think, are getting a little bit confused with um, the terminology that came in a couple of years ago with the, what was called the gather step. So when players receive the ball um, stationary, the rules haven't changed in terms of how we when we pivot and when we must dribble the ball from. So a lot of people were catching the ball, sort of taking that one step and um, releasing, uh, lifting their pivot foot off the ground before they've actually dribbled the ball. So it's important as, we're, as we get taught when we're refereeing to watch the defence, we still need to keep an eye on the offensive player as well to make sure they're not shuffling their feet at the start of the dribble because they are gaining a huge advantage by getting to the hoop um, before even dribbling the ball. So just a little bit more focus for us um, in the coming weeks just on trying to pick those up and making sure that we... You know, allow the defense to actually have a chance to play defense rather than these guys getting like two steps running start before they even uh, put the ball on the floor. So yeah. that's very important. Um, and one other thing, uh, sit right behind us, we've got Steve Adams here wearing um, our beautiful new floor controller shirts that you should. Um, so if you ever need to find a floor controller around any venue around Christchurch, these our floor controllers will be wearing these and um, nice and easily easily um, to, visible for us to, to see. And make sure if you have any issues, referees um, or coaches or anything, go and see the floor controller. And that's uh, at all sort of. venues, Marty? That is at including, all. Including cows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say now, but yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, right, for yeah. upcoming games this weekend, we have the Miles Toyota Women's Prems Games at 12.10pm. Uh, They're kicking off. Game one is Lincoln versus Horswell. So Lincoln is 1-0, Horswell 0-1. So that's happening on court one. On court two, UC will be taking on NC, both at one and a, uh, one. UC, oh, one. Oh, there you go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what James just said. Yes. So that game is on court two at 12.10 also. Cool. Following on from them, the men's games all on Cal's court one because of bang, bang, bang after the other. 145, Lincoln University, one and two, takes on the undefeated UC at two and oh. 320 Pioneer 2 and 1 after their miracle win <laughs> against the 1 and 2 Gators after their miracle loss, we'll say. And then 4.55 pm, Checkers 0 and 2, who should be 1 and 1 in North Kennedy 0 and 2. So, very, very tight competition here. Someone comes away in that 4.55 Yes, they do. Yep. Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh, the, the Rams, hopefully, you guys have been following the, uh, the NBL. Week 1 completed um, last week and the mm-hmm. week 2 coming on this week. The Rams are 3 and 0 uh, to start, so they've had a fantastic start to their season. Uh, Wednesday they play the Jets, 7.30 on Sky Sport 3. Uh, Thursday they play the Giants, 7.30 on Sky Sport 3. And Saturday versus the Nuggets, um, 7.30 on Sky Sport 9. So uh, it's kind of like a bit of an NBA schedule playing three three games a week and it's good to see the Rams and all the teams getting some games in, in this shortened uh, NBA season. I forgot to put it on there, but shout out Taylor Brett named as oh, MVP of week and one And one assist short of a triple goal. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw his face after he was gathered. When he realised, yes. Couldn't quite get it. Um... We have the school holidays coming up next week, and with that we have some holiday camps going on. So make sure you check out the CBA um, holiday programs 
uh, page or link on the CBA website. And then also go to uh, Pioneer Club, Gators Club, and North Canterbury Club to check out what they're running along with the Canterbury Rams running a uh, camp during the holidays. So if you're looking for more basketball to do, it is certainly available to you. Cool. And due to the magic of time travel, the Mecca's Thompson and Whelan round two took place last night by the time you see this and they'll be going on a hiatus over the holidays but um, great to see how excited the schools were to be back competing mm. and we tried to do the schedule so that if you're having an away game week one most of the time you'll have a home game in week two to, to give virtually every team one home game at least before the holidays not 100 percent but I think well above 90 percent of the teams will have had one game on their home floor excellent uh, i've just got a wee video here um showing um, a, a thing that's going on called Shik everyday ballers so this is a sort of um a little little video thing that you can apply for to become if you want to be a Shik everyday baller um check out the video click the link and um have a look and see exactly what you need to to do and and uh have a look yeah i think you get some Free tickets to some sales NBA game, uh, NBA, NBA games if you're up there, right. and maybe some gear. I think. Right? Yeah, maybe some razors, maybe. Yeah, yeah well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. So check that out on the uh, on the link there. Yep. Anyway, on to plays of the week. I've got I've got another sneaky one of two plays. One, Josiah Williams, a nice killer crossover here to freeze the defense in a nice sweet pump reverse layup. Gators Red then coming up the floor, and you can see a slightly lazy pass. Nor Price picks it off and goes in for a nice two-handed jam for safety. Hangs on the run to make sure no one gets into there. Fantastic. My play of the week is from Causewell Women's Midweek. Oh. Jean Duncan is uh, seen here with a lovely 360 spin and a shot from just fading away from behind the backboard. So uh, great footwork and nice finish yes. by Jean there in the midweek game for Horswell. Awesome. And the last one I've got here um, from an under-20 middle grade game on at Avonside Shirley. Um, Grayson Hetherington from NCY, he's actually playing in dark here because obviously they're playing the, playing the white team. Uh, Harry Skirrow misses a three-pointer, slight loose ball, rebound is um, sort of bouncing around, picks it up around the foul, a nice little push shot to, um, to give them the lead and they actually held on to win the game, I believe, yeah. um, going up by one with 15 seconds to go there, so good on you, Grayson. Um, just want to take this opportunity to thank another one of our funding supporters. So thank you very much to the Mainland Foundation, a special place in my heart as they help fund my salary. So thank you very much to the Mainland, Mainland Fand Foundation for that. Wow, if it's I could have some speech thing. lessons before. <laughs> anyway, that, that wraps, wraps up week five of the closeout. Good job, good effort. Be cool, be kind. Great job, great effort.